Welcome to Integrity Inspire, your daily dose of inspiration and motivation, featuring the bright and talented members of the Integrity Marketing Group family. Now, here's your host, Integrity co-founder and CEO, Brian W. Adams. All right. Well, hey, everybody. Thank you so much for joining today's Inspire podcast. So excited to uh, kick off this great week uh, with all of you. I hope everybody had an incredible weekend and uh, just could not be more excited to uh, uh, to kick this off. Uh, this weekend, my family and I spent a little time on the Internet watching some of the, in- the Integrity Idol contestants audition tapes. I oh my gosh, I am I'm beyond words at how talented some people are. I mean, we have some amazing talent with in the Integrity family. I mean, we got this guy Patrick Cash. I I, I mean, listen, I think Patrick on that deal played 17 instruments and sang. Uh you got people like Sandy Fredericks. Oh my gosh, Sandy, yours cracked me up. Well, it's not every day that you have a chance to win $7,000, 3500 to you, 3500 to your favorite charity, and a lot of other people getting to win uh, $2,000, 1000 of them and 1000 to their favorite charity. We're giving away over $15,000 for the Integrity Idol Contest. Um, it, we have had such a great response to this, <coughs> and we've had several people say, we need a little time to work on it over the weekend um, and and get ready for um, for their audition. And so we've extended the entry deadline to this Wednesday at 9 a.m. Central. So whenever we whenever we start this call on Wednesday, the uh, the submissions are up. So please, please, please get your submissions in. Even if they're they're just fun, I mean, and there's there's a lot of just fun ones, like Sandy Fredericks. If you hadn't watched that one, that was that one was uh, that one was priceless. But uh, um, seriously, please uh, give it a shot and have some fun with it. I tell you what, this has been just an incredible time and a lot of fun for all of us. I think the great thing about the Integrity Idol uh, is it takes a lot of courage to put yourself out there. And in addition to the potential of winning some money, uh, that courage builds character, but that, that courage also builds community within the Integrity family. It's an opportunity for all of us to get to know uh, each other and, and to, to really just, just uh, have some fun together. Um, and today's guest knows all all about what it takes to have courage and to build a strong community um, and, and and to really risk something out of your comfort zone. Uh, and he's been doing this for his entire career. I remember in 2006, I was at a conference, a sales conference in the Bahamas, and all over this this incredible resort, there were these young hungry, sharp, impressive uh, guys and gals wearing these really impressive polos saying senior select on, on, the, uh, on the polos. Um, and it was, it was one of the, these moments that I'll never forget because I was at this conference, and a lot of times you go to some of these sales conventions and it's a bunch of older people and, you know, they're, they're, uh, you know they've, they've, done, they've done their thing, they've had their success, but this was one of those those things, especially early in my career, I was sitting there going, oh my gosh, look how many young people who are excited and passionate about the business, and I was like, who is this senior select group, uh, and I was asking some guys, and they were like, oh my gosh, it's led by Frank Buse, and Frank is one of the most dynamic and most impressive uh, leaders in the final expense industry, and Frank has become not only one of the leading experts in the final expense industry, uh, but one of just the best people in our our, our business. Uh, after a highly successful start as working as an agent, he took a big, big step of uh, and leap of faith 
and started his own agency, Senior Select, in 1995. One of the keys to success in any endeavor is to build on a solid foundation. And from day one, Frank has built his business on a commitment to providing the best possible service to agents and clients alike. Today, Senior Select is known throughout the final expense industry for helping thousands of agents achieve greatness and for providing over a million clients with the peace of mind of knowing that their final expenses are taken care of. Frank is a true bulldog in more ways than one. Not only is he incredibly tenacious in his work and in life, but he's also a huge fan of the Georgia uh, Bulldogs and University of Georgia football team. I still remember the first time I ever met Frank, and and, uh, we were at this sales conference, and I just remember getting to know him and going, oh, my gosh, this guy is so so successful and doing it the right way. I want to figure out how to how to get to know Frank even better. And it's good to get, have a guy like Frank always standing by your side. And I'm very, very grateful that Frank chose to join the Integrity family. So, Frank, thank you so much for, for joining us today. It's been an honor to partner with you and to partner with Brittany and your family, uh, but but also just to honestly admire what you've done uh, over so many years since that first day I met you back in 2006, and I've just been an admirer of yours ever since. So thank you so much for, for joining us today. I appreciate you, buddy. Hey, good morning, Brian. Uh, good morning, Integrity family. Uh, good morning to everybody. Happy Monday to everybody. Uh, Kendall, thank you so much for the uh, for the great song to start us off. And Stephen, thank you for the music. But uh, Brian, thank you so much for the kind words uh, coming from you and coming from uh, from Integrity. That means so much. And I remember uh, I remember those days back at that at that conference a long time ago. And certainly we've come a long way since then. But uh, kind of stay, stay true to our values the whole way, but uh, so excited to be on the call this morning. You know, I am a Georgia boy through and through. I grew up in a very small town uh, called Manchester, Georgia. Probably a lot of you have never even heard of it. It's a little town, maybe 5,000 people at the most uh, live there, and uh, you know, at a young age, I grew up in a family where my, my mom and dad, they got divorced when I was very young. I think I was three years old. Mm-hmm. And uh, somewhere along the way, maybe five or six, I, I went to live with my dad. And, you know, that kind of started started my life there. And, uh, you know, my dad and I have always been very, very close. But, uh, you know, we, we built that bond at a very early age. And, you know, living in this small town, we all, everybody knew everybody. You know, you knew who your neighbors were. You didn't have to lock your doors. We, we don't live in that day and time now, but that's kind of the way it was back then. And neighbors helped neighbors. And, you know, we checked on each other and we're, and, uh, we're concerned about each other and always we're, we're there for each other. So uh, just to kind of give you a little bit of, uh, of background where I grew up and where I started, that small, typical small town, uh, small town life, a uh, small rural country town life. So so what, what were you involved in? I, listen, I grew up in a small town. I grew up in a town a little smaller than yours. Not, not many people grew up smaller than your town. I, I grew up in a town of... It was 2,244 people when I was there. I think it's down to 1,800 people now. Um, what, what was it like? What, what, what all did you guys do when, when you were growing up in that small town? Well, you know, kind of what we're having to do today, like you found things to do. You rode your bicycle. You went to the local Y. You, uh, you know, you, you hung out with your boys, went fishing, uh, things like that. But, you know, back at this little town I grew up in, Brian, high school football was, was the – that was life. That was everything. That was the ultimate. And uh, played on. Uh, I started at a young age to play, but I, you know, when I started, I, I was kind of a little bit overweight. And back for those of you on the call, you may remember back in the day, you had a weight limit. You you could only weigh like 120 pounds, or they wouldn't let you play. And I was over 120 pounds, and I went to my dad and I said, I, I wonder, I really want to do this. And he said, Well, son, you got to lose weight if you're going to do it. He said, But if you do this, you're going to do it right. He said, You're not going to quit. He said, so if I let you do this and, and I help you, you know, work with you to lose this weight, he said, you're not going to quit. You're going to finish this. And my dad always hammered that home with me, you know, finish what you start. So uh, I went and I lost the weight and I got down to the right weight and I got on the team. And, 
Actually, Brian, I tried to quit twice, and my dad wouldn't let me quit. He said, nope. He said, uh, you made that commitment, and we're going to follow through. So uh, I, I, I got on the team, finished the season. And so I learned at a, learn, at a very early age to, uh, to finish what you start. But uh, from there, I went on and played high school football. And actually, in high school, we only lost three games the entire uh, three years wow. that I played high school football. Crazy. We actually, my junior year, we went the entire season. We won the state championship. We didn't even get scored on the entire year. We shut every team out that we played. And we, we played teams. We only had 45 players on our team. So we all had to play both ways. But I loved, I, I loved that. I learned a lot about teamwork. A little, I learned a lot about working together. I learned a lot about picking your fellow man up and your teammate up if he's down. And so we, because we had to, we only had, you know, we didn't have enough players to go around. So we, we all had to play both ways, and we learned to support each other at a very early age. Man, yeah, like uh, it, it sounds like it sounds like you grew up very similar to what I grew up here in here in Texas, especially in, in well, all over Texas. Uh, football is like a religion to some folks, and uh, I, I think it's amazing how lessons like that carry you on for years uh, or even decades after the fact. Uh, you never know the effect of, that you're going to you know, have on people or, or what, um, what you're going to you know, experience as you kind of get into that. But uh, th- those type of experiences really matter, that's for sure. They do. They do. And, you know, a lot of that has played over into my business life and my adult life, as you said. And, you know, I, I, the reason I got into business, my dad kind of introduced me to this at a very early age. He used to uh, work for A.L. Williams, for those of you who've heard them. But uh, I would go to these recruiting meetings with my dad, and I was like 13, 14 years old. And, and, and I was just like, wow, I can't believe this. All these people in here, and, and uh, they're coming in here, and they're, they're recruiting. They're bringing other people in. And every week, those meetings, would, or every month, they would get bigger and bigger and bigger. And I was like, this is unbelievable. And uh, just uh, was got to see that at a very early age about how to uh, how to grow and multiply and how to help others and bring others into the business, and so uh, that kind of laid the groundwork for later on when I did get into the business when I got older and, and was grown. Man, that sounds like uh, it sounds like your dad gave you a lot of good foundations to work from. Um, tell tell us more how you got started selling in the business. So this. It's funny. I, I was in college. I was in uh, I was in my third year of college, and uh, just honestly, Brian, I'd gotten bored with it. You know, I just didn't. I, I I had made both my daughters finish school, but that's one thing I didn't finish. But I just got bored with it, and I said, "What do I want to do?" And uh, I thought about going to those meetings, and I thought about the insurance business. And really, this is the only job I've ever had. I've always been in the insurance business. I've never done anything else. And so I got into the I, I got into the business with uh, with a company, and back then, you know, let's tell you how old I am. We uh, we collected weekly insurance. You ran a debit, you ran a route, and you would go out and you collect from people. And so you would do that. And and we had to prospect. We didn't have leads back then. We had to prospect. And I always remembered every Friday to my staff manager, I had to turn in 40 names of people that I was going to talk to the next week. And so we had to we had to go out and, and get these names, and the next week you had to call on those 40 people, and then you had to come back in the following Friday and turn in, you know, who you had sold and who you talked to and what the results were. But uh, so I learned very early in my career about prospecting and about talking to people, and 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 did that for a while, and then uh, I finally moved on over into the final expense business, is what we call it, what we know it as today, and uh, worked for several carriers and kind of sat back and learned and uh, was introduced to leads. And I, when I got leads, I was like, wow, I can't believe this. Lee, this is crazy. If I've, got, if I've got 20, 30, 40 people that are, or have already expressed interest about uh, buying coverage to go see every week, there's no telling what we could do. And so I was so excited about that and uh, just had great success with it. You know, every week we had these people already kind of lined up to go see. You know, you had people to go call on. So... Learned it very early in the career about the lead business, and uh, that's kind of what's driven our business today to where we are now is is having the leads, and we have focused on that. But uh, started that that kind of transformed around 1995. I started Senior Select. I decided, hey, had great success as an agent. Um, ultimately, had my best year in 2001. 
But uh, I'll get to that in a second. But we had great success as an agent. I started Senior Select, and, you know, one thing I wanted to do, I wanted to focus on lead. And so we started our lead program, and I literally would have kids come over on the weekend to my house and uh, my, my children's friends, and we would stuff envelopes I would because I didn't have a lead machine back then. And we would sit around on the weekends, and we would stuff envelopes by hand, and we would just do whatever we had to do to get those ready to go out in the mail. And so we started mailing leads. And then I finally bought my first lead machine. I bought it from an old power company uh, here in LaGrange. And uh, just, you know, I was so excited to get that first piece of equipment. So I bought that machine, and then I bought another. And then we outgrew that one, and I bought another. And then we outgrew that one. And before I knew it, Brian, we were doing 2 million pieces of mail a month. And uh, it just got to be somewhat overwhelming. And I said to myself, you know, i got to make a decision here. Do I want to be in the lead business? Do I want to be in the insurance business? And so... Hmm. I ran across a girl that I graduated high school with, and uh, it's funny how life comes full circle. And she was actually doing print work for us, and she said, you know, if you'll show me how to do this, I could do this these leads for you. You know, could, you could just let me outsource, and I'll do it for you. And I said, well, okay. So I kind of taught her how we did it and what we looked at, the demographics and everything. And she started doing that for us, and um, we had, you know, that just took a lot of burden off me. But when I began to hire people, Brian, I said to myself, you know, I can't, how can I get these people to do kind of what I've done in personal sales? And the first thing I said to myself, I got, first thing I got to do, I can't ask people to go out and give me all they've got unless I give them all, you know, show that I've given all I have. In 2001, I set out on a mission. I said, I want to go out and have one year that I write the most that I possibly could in one year. And I did this because I met a guy at a sales conference and he said, there's no way anybody will ever do over 300000 in premium. And I said, well, I'm going to do it. And so I get I set out that year and I worked fifty to sixty leads a week, even worked on Saturdays, and ended up I wrote four hundred and eleven thousand dollars in annual premium in one year by myself. And so led three different companies in production for that year. So I had that year that and I, I said to myself, you know, there's no limit to what you can do. If you make up your mind, if you if you make up your mind you're going to work hard enough, you can overcome anything and you can do anything you want to do in this world. Something my dad always taught me growing up and had that great year and uh, that kind of springboarded us to hiring people and bringing in and saying, wow, you know, if he can do it, anybody can do it. So, Wow. That, for for everybody on this this call and, and listening here that doesn't understand, you know, what Frank just talked about, that is a huge deal for somebody to sell $411,000 in premium. He was number one for three different insurance carriers. Again, that is that is just almost, I, I don't know if I've ever heard of anybody being number one for three different insurance carriers uh, at, at the same time. Um, Frank, you were, you were killing it as an agent. Um, what what made what made you make the leap of, of starting Senior Select after you, you'd been you'd been building this business and building your own business? A lot of people would just said, "Man, you know what? It's easier to play, you know, be on a one man band and, and play for myself." What what led you to start Senior Select? Well, Brian, one thing you know, when whenever you're successful as an individual, a lot of people see that, and so they they really come to you and ask you, hey, what are you doing? And so I had a few guys that I knew came to me and said, how are you, how are you doing this? How are you making this money? How are you having all this success? And I said, well, you know, I could teach these guys how to do this. And so I, I, that's kind of where we started. So I hired one guy, and then he told another guy, and then another and another, you know, the, the power of one, so to speak. I know we've all heard that statement before, and so it just kind of, just kind of ballooned out, and the next thing you know, we're we're down there in the Bahamas where you met us with a bunch of guys running around with senior select shirts on. It just it happened that quickly. And that... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that uh, it's funny. Some some of the best businesses in America don't start up start out with a really thought out business plan. It's just hey, I want to help people. I want to help them get started, and then one thing turns to to another, and uh, all of a sudden. You, you. Um, I mean, geez, it's it's amazing. I, Scott Riddle sent me a text um, the other day, uh, yesterday actually, and uh, and was so excited about having you on the call. And he said, Brian, I just want to tell you that Frank Buse 
was the best final expense agent I ever saw. I watched him grow from that to a great manager, and now I'm proud to call him a partner. I know you respect Scott as much as I do, and when I got that, I wanted to share that with you just for the simple fact that, that man, I um, that, that's a that's a big compliment coming from a, a really amazing human being. Uh, but that that is, uh, I mean, he's and he's seen he's seen a lot of agents over over the years, so. The fact that he he says you were the best he's ever seen is really really incredible. So uh, so so you you guys built up Senior Select and and then and then what happened? We built it up and ultimately built it up to the point we were doing like twenty million a year in premium, which is a lot back in oh, you know the early two thousands. We were just killing it. And, uh, you know, I had a guy that, that I was involved with a partnership, and, you know, as, as sometimes happens, uh, those things split up and fall apart, and people people go separate ways. And, you know, these are, this is one of the challenges I had in my career, Brian. And, you know, when that happened, I, I said to myself, what do I do? And ultimately ended up me and my, uh, my office manager, Tina Shaw, who's been with me for 14 years. And Tina's one, amazing. She, she she is just one of the most amazing people, isn't she? She certainly is, and I I tell you what, there's no way that we could even begin to think about doing what we do without her. But she stayed with me, and she and I were sitting in this office where I'm talking from right now. We were sitting on the floor, and on the steps, going upstairs, asking ourselves, "What do we do?" You know, and I was. So I started over. You know, I, I got some encouragement from my great friend, Mr. Allentown. I got some encouragement mm-hmm. from Scott Riddle, who you just spoke about, who is probably the finest man I know in this world. And I got encouragement uh, from uh, Tim McCoy. And, and these are guys I work for, Brian, and that's how they know about my production because I work with these guys. They were they were my upline. And so many of the things that I've learned and done, I, I learned from them. And so... Uh, I said, they said, hey, don't worry about it. We'll help you. We got you back. Just go back and start doing what you know how to do and what you're good at, and and you'll build it back. And so that's what we did. You know, you can either lay there and cry about it and get upset about it, or you can pick yourself up and dust yourself off and start over and build it back better than it was before. And so that's what we did, and uh, we came back from it. But I learned many things from that, uh, Brian. One of the, one of the main things I learned is. Your relationship with people and your relationship with your agents and your relationship with your coworkers, it has to be about something more than just money. It has to it has to go deeper than that. And I think that has a lot to do with the, the success of Integrity Marketing Group is because the relationship that we all have, is, it's, it's about more than just money. It's about helping each other. Everybody brings what they do well to the table, and we all – share that with each other, and we all work together. And when you start doing that, that's powerful. You're creating something special. And that's one of the things we did when we built Senior Select back. We wanted to be a, be different. We wanted to let our agents know, you know, we do things differently here. We're going to have your back. When you need something, we're going to help you do that, and we're going to be there for you. It's one thing if you go out. I know Scott Riddle always told me, you know, if you go catch a fish for a man, you can feed him for that day. But if you teach that man how to fish, then you can he can feed his family for a lifetime. And so that's what we try to do here. We want to build careers for agents. We want them to, to be able to feed their family for a lifetime. And, you know, that's, that's what we've always tried to do is focus on people, focus on service, focus on doing for others. And if you do that, I promise you the money will come. You can still make good money and, and give good service to people and be there for them. So... That's kind of how we built it back, and we focused on that when we when we did that, and it certainly worked out well for us. Ultimately, culminating with uh, with us being asked to be a part of Integrity Marketing Group, which is probably the best decision I ever made. You know, he you're talking about men that I heroes to me, people that I look up to, that I grew up in this business with, that I'm now partners with, and you know, when you have men like Scott Riddle, Allen Town. Uh, Brian McCann, Avi Asseline, uh Tim McCoy, I can't tell you how much these people have done for me, been there for me over the years. And, and my passion now is I want to pay that back. I want to give that back to these younger guys who work with us. I want to do for them what others have done for me. That's what it's all about is passing down, passing this down from generation to generation in this business. And that's what I want to do, and that is my passion, and that's what 
that's what we focus on, and I think that's going to be our future. And, you know, if you do all these things and you do them right, the money will be there. Man, I listen, first of all, thank you for sharing that story. Um, and I agree, that's exactly what the Integrity Platform is all about, helping each other through challenges, finding ways to break through adversity, and being linked together makes us so much stronger, uh, frankly. All of us linked together can help us get through uh, issues and problems that, that some of us individually might not could have ever gotten through. And I, I know I personally sleep a lot better at night knowing that I've got all those people that you just mentioned and a lot more uh, that are, are working hard day and night as, as hard or harder than I am trying to figure out what are the best ways for us to attack these issues and to, to grow the business and to, um, to, to continue to really uh, help more people, and it's, it's incredibly powerful. Frank, there, there's not many people that could have gone through what you went through. So you, you were the number one agent for three different carriers. You decided to teach others to fish, as you talked about, and decided to, I want to help others, and I want to help others see success in this business. So you, you started giving away all your secrets and training others to be successful. Um, and you built up one of the largest final expense agencies in the U.S. Um, and were just crushing it. And then because of issues outside of your own uh, control and having a partner that, that, that frankly, um, you know, did you wrong, um, you, you almost lost it all. But you and Tina sitting on the steps and you all saying, we got a choice to make. We're at a crossroads. Do we do we fight this out and do we build back from the ashes, right? Or do we do we fold up the tent? Um, and and I, I I tell you what, man, you thankfully you guys chose to um, to to um, you know to, to to fight it out and to build it back up. Allen Town just sent me a text, and I, I got a I know you you respect Allen as much as anybody, and. Uh, he, he, Alan said, Frank learned many years ago that checking his ego at the door and putting others way out in front of himself would be the difference maker inside of Senior Select. And the 30 years, he's, Alan said he's been working with IMOs, he said, I've never met anyone, anyone that fights as hard for his agents as Frank does. Um, He's like he, he said. He he said uh, Frank leads from the front and always makes sure that his agents have a path for a career and they build a career within the insurance uh, business. And Frank never speaks about himself. He's always talking about how his producers are doing in ways that they can continue to grow. Uh, and expand. Bob Grannon just sent me a text, and he said, Frank's example raises the game for his teammates. What a great leader that leads by example. Uh, those are what those are what your peers, these are what your partners are saying about you, man. And it's because of the way that you overcame that adversity. And I think whenever anybody uh, has you know faces adversity, and we're all going to face adversity in our career, in our life. And our family, and it's how you stand up to that adversity. Do you do you shrink down and and say, well, let's fold it up, or do we stand up and do we uh, lead from the front as you did and show other people how to how to do it? And 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 by you joining Integrity, uh, in Senior Select joining Integrity, it was it was one of the you know great compliments for us as a business that. That a business like yours that was growing as fast as you guys are growing, um, and and since we partnered together, we've even been able to accelerate that growth, um, has been just a tremendous joy for for me and all of our partners. Uh, and so, Frank, I just want to tell you, thank you so much for all that you do and all that you've done to to make uh, this business such an amazing business. And uh, and and really, thank you for all that that you do to uh, help others and to recognize others uh, overall. So thank you, my friend. I really appreciate you. 
Well, Brian, thank you. And again, it's not about me. It's about all of us as a team. And, you know, like you said, we're certainly, you're always stronger together and you're always better together. And I tell you what, to get compliments from people like Allentown, Allentown's probably my best friend in this world. And he's just, uh, they don't come any better than Allentown. Bob Grennan is a, the best. He just does a great job. He he has he's seen both sides of it, and he can work. He works so well with us on the life council and with the home office of uh, the carriers we deal with. Uh, so glad you brought him on to the team, and uh, just been a joy working with Bob in a more close environment for the last year. He's just been great. I just love working with him. But uh, anyway, buddy, I, I, Brian, I'm so glad to be a part of this. It's the best decision we ever made. By the way, last year we had the biggest year we've ever had, even before the breakup or the split up, and so. It was certainly uh, the, the right decision for me. And now not only do I have uh, the support of Alan and Scott and Tim, <laughs> and and Ivy, but I've got all you guys as well. And the Home Office of Integrity is such great people. Kendall, uh, Jessica, I can go on and on. I could go all day. You you know all these people. You work with them. You hired them. And you did a great job. And it's, so, it's just so reassuring to have that support. You know, and that... To me, that's the biggest thing is having that reassurance. I get up every day. I love coming to work. There was a time when I didn't, but I love coming to work every day because I know no matter what I'm facing, I've got people that, that are going to be there and support me, and I've got others that that depend on me and that I support as well. And So we just all work together, and it works. So thank you for allowing me to share that this morning with you. Well, man, I, I, I'm, I'm not done. So <clears throat> uh, Brian McCann just texted me and said, when Avi and I moved, into the final expense market, Frank was the guy we followed. He was a great person of support during the beginning times of your insurance group until the day, and he was the one that we were, we were, we were following. Uh, Frank, thank you again. Really appreciate everybody's um, um, joining us today. Hopefully, you, this is another example of how we get to know each other better during this time. And uh, what a blessing this has been for me. I think for all of the listeners um, in, in, on, on this um, uh, podcast as well, we look forward to having everybody on uh, tomorrow uh, where we'll have another exciting uh, visitor. And Well, thanks, everybody. I hope you all have a blessed day and look forward to talking to you soon. Have a great Monday, everybody. Bye-bye.